Hi, I'm John Riley. Uh, welcome to my show here at the Senior Center. I have uh, a show here for the month of April, and I want to show you what I've got. I started out doing jellyfish, or as I just learned this morning in Spanish, agua viva, which is even a better name, living water. So our first painting is a jellyfish and some others, and they're flying to the moon, a little fanciful, but hey, you never know what jellyfish might be doing. They're kind of mysterious. This is also a jellyfish. And if somebody says, oh, these are too crazy, the colors are too weird, I dare you to go online and look up jellyfish, do Google images. They are the most amazing, most colorful animal on the earth. This is a pale reflection of what jellyfish really look like. These are twin jellyfish. Again, you can't argue with the colors. These colors are a pale reflection, again, of the real thing. Here's some more, uh, I call these baby jellyfish. Um, they're all different colors, and they're all tiny, so they're baby jellyfish. Um, this continues the idea that they can be any color. There's no limit to the color. And this one is a good one to kind of study because I really wanted to emphasize the technique I was using. It's called flow. It's where you get paint to flow and to mix. So in here, I've taken different colors and mixed them with a palette knife. And the paints themselves start to interact and make some of these great effects. So I couldn't have painted this. The paint created it with my help of moving it around. So, the title of this uh, show is called Containing the Flow, and that's what I tried to do. If you're using flow art, usually you're doing abstract art, you're trying to get these incredible shapes moving and flowing. What I tried to do was be more figurative and make actual real things. So, jellyfish was an easy one to start with because they're always flowing. Let's go see what else we got going on. Again. Here's a, a jellyfish, uh, and you can really see the flow of the paint at work. The reds, the greens, the blues, the yellows, all mixing and making just a really nice pattern. And this is our last jellyfish. This one is probably the most colorful one. It's got uh, all kinds of uh, purples, pinks, blues, aquamarines, turquoise, green. And this is not an exaggeration, I've already said this. Jellyfish are even more elaborate than this. Now, we finished with the jellyfish section. We're going to go to some other paintings um, that are about flow and containing the flow. What's more flow than a waterfall? This is um, blue um, and white creating the waterfall. I've uh, added some gray and green to the side to give the impression of a uh, forest and rocks that might surround a waterfall. But again, you get this great effect of the paints mixing, and it's really fun. Um, so this is a, is a good effect, uh, a good example of flow. Continuing with the idea of flow, this is a rogue wave. And I took uh, blue and white and green, which are typical colors of a wave or of the ocean and created a, a rogue wave, a massive wave, something you might see at Mavericks in California. I could have added a surfer, but I didn't. And again, this is just the effect of the, the paints working with themselves, and interacting. Again, of course, I'm using a palette to make it go where I want. That's the containing the flow. With this one, I moved along, We're going into outer space now you get a great effect of flow with, with outer space. Um, these are twin stars, something you might see with the Hubble, um, two stars interacting, uh, destroying, living off of each other. And this one is just flame, orange, red, yellow. And it's, I, I really, really like this, uh, the way the paints interact. Staying with the uh, outer space, we have a total eclipse of the sun. So we have black in the middle. I'm using black canvases uh, because it's outer space, because it's underwater. Um, gives the effect of, of space. 
better than a white canvas. And then you see the corona of the sun and the, uh, the blasts that come out of the sun that you can only see during a total eclipse. Okay, these are uh, simpler, but uh, really get a good effect um, to create the atmosphere of the earth using flow, blue, white, black. Uh, you really get a great effect uh, to, to see the earth. And of course, you need the moon and the, and the sun. Same thing with the, with the moon, uh, creating craters, and, uh, using again the flow technique to get the black and white of the moon. And get the effect of the earth in the background. It's a great way to create uh, an atmospheric effect. Here's the sun in all of its glory, surrounded by some planets. Again, the, uh, the flow art is creating just this incredible surface of the sun that if you look at the surface of the sun with a telescope, this is what it looks like. It's moving, it's constantly flowing, it's, it's on fire. And I tried to capture that with this painting. Okay. And here we go, uh, still some more outer space. This is uh, Saturn, um, and I've gotten the ring and the, uh, the planet itself. And again, the flow is really very effective on creating surface of a planet because again, it's always flowing, it's gaseous. This one is uh, pretty apocalyptic. It's end of times comet. Imagining what it would look like if a comet hit the Earth, the explosion, the uh, destruction. This would be kind of the end of, of times, and that's the name of this painting. It's End of Times Comet. This is a constellation, um, again, with uh, things moving, trying to capture the movement. So in a constellation, you have constant movement of stars and planets, and I, I tried to capture the movement of a, of a constellation. So we're coming to the end of their outer space exploration with uh, these paints. This is a black hole. Here is the black hole itself, and it's sucking everything into it. And again, with the paint, you get a great feeling of flow, things going into the black hole and never coming back out again. Since this was such a long winter, I was inspired to replicate our weather pattern for this winter. As some of you may know, in March we had storm after storm, and this is what is called bombogenesis. This is the storm moving in, circulating, and settling right over Massachusetts. We saw this so many times this winter, I had to paint it. And now for the last painting in this series, a heart. I saw, after I painted this, something that I think is something I might want to explore a little bit more next time I do one of these. I saw a man kissing a woman. You can sort of see a face here turned back with the hair, two faces kissing, and I thought that that was kind of perfect for a heart. Um, so it's something to explore next time. So happy Valentine's Day. Thanks for coming to my show.